GoPro's future is riding on the upcoming holiday season. After a lackluster two years on Wall Street, the 14-year-old company pulled out all the stops at an event in Squaw Valley, California to introduce new gadgets and to resuscitate a once pioneering image that has faded in the wake of sluggish sales. The new devices include a much-anticipated drone, GoPro's first major product outside its core video capturing devices, whose success or failure will weigh heavily on the company's future. Delayed for six months, the long-rumored Karma, a foldable, pricey, for a propeller rig that can carry either of the company's two signature camera lines, is not only GoPro's first drone, but also its attempt to show that it can innovate beyond cameras. As with any hardware manufacturer, GoPro's longevity will not only be determined by how well it can improve its existing cameras, but also on how well it can anticipate future products to help customers capture their lives on video. We're not a camera company. GoPro founder and CEO Nick Woodman said on stage, reciting one of his oft-used mantras. We're an experience-sharing company. Woodman, who took his company public in June 2014, has found that vision harder to sell to investors and the public. After more than a decade doubling sales year over year, camera sales began to falter, resulting in a revenue decline of 47% to $220.7 million in its second quarter this year. As some of the company's critics have pointed out, users simply do not feel the need to replace older camera models as frequently as, say, they replace smartphones. Other critics point to the fact that GoPros are hard to grasp for the casual user. In the past, Customers were often frustrated by the fact that they'd capture hours of footage, but were unable to quickly edit that material into cohesive, shareable videos. In February, the company moved to address that problem by spending $105 million to purchase two mobile-based, video editing apps Replay and Splice, with Woodman acknowledging to Forbes at the time that it was a major developmental hurdle for his company. On Monday, Woodman tried to show that his company had moved past all its difficulties. Walking on stage while whooping and carrying a backpack, he unveiled GoPro's new updated cameras, including the Hero 5 Black Edition, which now has a built-in touchscreen LCD, and a smaller, cube-like Hero 5 Session. Both cameras, he said, are now waterproof without additional casing and feature voice control which allows users to take photos or videos by simply talking to their devices. The voice recognition feature can be used with seven different languages, and Woodman demonstrated the feature to the audience in Spanish. Woodman also took time to showcase the company's new software chops. He announced GoPro Plus, a new $4.99 per month content storage service which allows a user to automatically upload their footage and photos to a cloud account while the camera is charging. There was also the unveiling of Quick, an app developed from the company's acquisitions of Replay and Splice, that will allow users to immediately edit their GoPro footage on their phones to create short videos for Facebook and Instagram. For the first time across the board, GoPro is easy, Woodman said, alluding to users' past difficulties. After moving through the software and camera updates, Woodman stooped down to unzip his backpack and bring out a compact quadcopter that he unfolded to cheers and hollers. Unlike early speculation, which said that the device would be a flying camera with built-in image capturing capabilities, the Karma works by attaching GoPro's existing cameras to a stabilizing gimbal that is attached to the front of the craft. While that will not allow for 360-degree video-like competing drones that traditionally carry the camera on the undercarriage, GoPro said that it will allow the drone to capture footage that is free of any propellers or protruding features that can disrupt a shot. While the Karma is arriving late, and the market is replete with devices from companies like DJI, Unique and 3D Robotics, a former GoPro partner, GoPro has not run out of time. Industry experts said that drone sales lagged industry expectations last year, and the new fair rules on the commercial use of drones passed over the summer may make the devices more popular in the coming years. GoPro will test consumers' appetite this winter, as it hawks its devices to holiday shoppers. The Karma, however, will not be cheap. 
though many expected a cheaper drone that could undercut the price of models like the DJI Phantom 3 Standard, which now retails for around $500, GoPro's drone, which comes with the backpack and controller, will retail for $799 without a camera, while it can be packaged with the Hero 5 Black and Hero 5 Session for $1,099 and $999 respectively. Those price points tempered investor enthusiasm, which led to an 8% jump in GoPro's stock price during the event that later fell after Woodman announced retail price. Like in most consumer electronics category, observers expect the price of drones to fall as companies compete for market share, and GoPro needs to be competitive on price to be a contender. Companies like Parrot and Unique already have beginner drones that retail under $500, while DJI, far and away the market leader, is expected to announce a slimmed-down, cheaper flying camera later this month. For now, GoPro will bask in its launch, having finally produced a device that will take it away from its complete dependence on cameras. And investors seem to want to believe. Shares were up more than nearly 3% to $15.41 as of 3.06 p.m. in New York, approaching the company's six-month high.